The time was the 1970s, the high watermark of the tennis boom. And tennis players weren't just athletes, they were rock stars. Crossover cultural icons commanding big time attention all over the world. And so Tennis Channel is pleased to offer an exclusive presentation of one of that era's finest events. The nationally televised Pepsi Grand Slam, a four-man ATP tournament that took place from 1976 to 1980. The Pepsi Grand Slam, a high-stakes shootout featuring the game's very best. The passionate Jimmy Connors always leaving it all on the court. His biggest rival, the understated Swede, Bjorn Borg. The young John McEnroe making his way to the top. Arthur Ashe, classy and compelling. And a host of other top players. Vitas Carolitis, Manuel Arantes, Brian Gottlieb, and the dashing Argentine, Guillermo Vilas. They're all here, giving their all. It's the Pepsi Grand Slam, only on Tennis Channel. Good. Hi, I'm Kevin Frazier, and welcome to Tennis Channel Classics. You know, throughout the history of tennis, there have been special events that really promote our sport in ways that are both innovative and engaging. Now, one such competition began in 1976. It was called the Pepsi Grand Slam, a four-man ATP event pitting a quartet of the game's very best male players and often including those who'd recently earned Grand Slam singles titles. It aired on national TV on CBS and the compressed format of the Grand Slam was exceptionally compelling and these were fierce battles. Now, rarely was a tennis match more combative than when Bjorn Borg and Jimmy Connors went at it. As these two took the court for the 1979 Pepsi Grand Slam final, their rivalry was etching its way into the history books. Over the previous three years, they'd met in four Grand Slam finals, Bjork taking two at Wimbledon, Connors gaining a little bit of payback with a pair of final round wins at the U.S. Open. As Connors put it later, quote, we just beat each other to death. And that made it oh so good for us. We take you now to CBS's Pat Summerall and Tony Trabert and Tennis Channel's presentation of the 1979 Pepsi Grand Slam final between Bjorn Borg and Jimmy Connors. Good afternoon and welcome to the Boca West Racquet Club. I'm Pat Summerall with our Davis Cup captain, Tony Traver. You couldn't ask for better playing conditions for this final between Borg and Connors. And what about the contrast? Playing style, Captain. Well, Pat, uh, you know Borg is going to be very patient. A lot of loop shots. Uh, he's waiting for Connors to try to come in so he can make the passing shot or force Connors into an error. Jimmy's going to be looking for the short ball. If it bounces up, he'll take it to the top of the bounce. He'll try to attack as much as he can. Uh, the last two times they played, the match has been great, and I think this one should also be a very good well, one. Well, you certainly recall last year in the final here and how good that was. It certainly was. A three-set match. Both finals against with Borg and Connors have been three sets. And there's no reason to think that this won't be a very close match. Whoever wins gets $150,000. So let's go down now for a closer look at uh, the two contestants. Co Connors and Borg. Tony Trabert said just a second ago, Connors will ever be the aggressor. No matter who he plays, that's his style. Borg will be patient. No matter who he plays, that's his style. Certainly going to have, Jimmy is going to make some errors in his effort to try to uh, be very uh, aggressive, but uh, he hopes that he can cut the errors down and attack as much as possible. Borg, again, is, is going to be the patient one. Uh, we'll see some topspin lobs from him, I'm sure. Uh, he can hit the passing shots either way, so it's going to be... Uh, a very interesting match, a real contrast in styles. Tony, when uh, Connors beat McEnroe on Friday, the weather conditions were, were very windy and very difficult to play tennis. Yesterday it was better when Borg beat Vilas, and today it's just about perfect. It certainly is, Pat. Conditions should be excellent. Here now to welcome you to this tournament is Mr. John Scully, president, Pepsi-Cola Company.
Tony, you mentioned that uh, Borg had, uh, Connors had beaten Borg the last two times they had played. The all-time record is 10-6 in favor of Connors. He beat him uh, in Buenos Aires. He also beat him in the finals of the U.S. Open. But uh, I sort of drop a little of the significance to that because uh, Borg had a very, very severe blister on his thumb. And he was not himself. I don't think there's any question about that. I think that's certainly uh, fair to say, Pat. And the thing about this uh, surface is it's it's slow, and that helps Borg. That's why I think uh, he's favored to win this match. There's the prize money breakdown. First place, as we mentioned before, $150,000. The winner of this gets that. Whoever loses gets $75,000 for finishing second. John McEnroe earlier today beat uh, Guillermo Vilas, and he got the $45,000 third place prize. And Vilas wound up with 30,000, and you can hear the crowd starting to respond to the fact that we're just about ready to go in the Grand Slam of tennis. This has been, uh, well, there's Mike Blanchard, who will sit in the umpire's chair, and there's no one more capable than he. That's certainly true. He's been involved in the game for a long, long time. Might have heard him announce that Borg won the toss and elected to receive. So Connors will start from the far end. The wind is a little bit in his face. Borg has whatever wind there is at his back, so the ball will carry a little bit farther on lob. From this end of the court, Borg's in. Blanchard says play, and here we go. Not a bad way to start a tennis match. And if that point is indicative of the quality we're going to have, it's going to be something else. This place accommodates somewhere over 10,000 people. And the attendance has been fantastic. And as you would expect, it is occupied today. there's anyone playing the game that takes the ball as early as Connors does so in this kind of a court he wants to get it as high as he can on the bounce so he has the best possible angle into the court surface that's pretty good but on a, a clay court and on two cut court like this it's something else So that drop shot by Connors was not so much to win the point outright, but to get Borg up to the net where the ball's low, he can't hit it too hard, and that gives Connors a good chance at a passing shot. Borg got there, he just couldn't make the shot. <laughs> Jimmy Connors has won the first.
first game of the first set. What would you say to a deep pain relief cream that can naturally begin to relieve arthritis pain, joint stiffness, and muscle aches in 30 minutes or less? My, oh, Myomed. Presenting Myomed, the natural deep pain reliever. What would you say to an odor-free, non-irritating cream that penetrates deep for pain relief to sore muscles, tendons, ligaments, and arthritic joints? My, oh, Myomed. New Myomed the odor-free, non-irritating, natural deep pain reliever. What would you say to a cream with a unique delivery system that can target pain relief straight to the parts of your body that need it most? Myo Myomed. New Myomed, the targeted, odor-free, non-irritating, natural deep pain reliever. Now what would you say if I told you you can try Myomed for free? My, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Oh my. Now for a limited time, get a free supply of Myomed and a free copy of the Nine Secrets to Pain-Free Living. New Myomed is the deep pain relief cream that is non-prescription and safe. In 30 minutes or less, Myomed's clinically proven ingredients begin to relieve arthritis pain, joint stiffness, and muscle aches. So what would you say to a deep pain relief cream that makes it easy to carry life's biggest bundle of joy? My oh Myomed. Myomed, the targeted, odor-free, non-irritating, natural deep pain reliever. And did I mention that you can try Myomed for free? My oh my oh my oh my. Call now and ask if you can get your free supply of safe, natural, non-prescription Myomed. You'll also receive your free copy of the Nine Secrets to Pain-Free Living. This offer is not available in any store and is for a limited time only. Call this number now for your free month's trial supply and book or visit myomednow.com. There are more than just two fine tennis players in attendance here. Marty Reeson, the director of tennis at Boca West at the Racquet Club here. Looking on with his wife, sitting on his left, April. Fine athlete. Got a new hairdo. Still a fine athlete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he played basketball at Northwestern, done a marvelous job in tennis. We get a close-up look at Borg, you'll see that his left Borg hand is taped started. on the palm. And his right thumb is taped but it doesn't seem to bother him. Right thumb is where he had the problem. In the U.S. Open. players stay off of Borg's forehand, the one-handed side, as much as possible because they feel that's a stronger shot. Connors has played it quite a bit so far. Doesn't act like he's really loosened up yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know at what time he, he warmed up this morning, but seems to uh, not be moving as well as he normally does. How much would you warm up on the day before a oh, match like this? Half an hour. I would, but it varies with each player. Thank you. 
And it's break point for Connors. said throughout the week that he felt he was a better player on surfaces like this slope because of his increased patience. You certainly have to have that on this kind of a court and particularly against a player like Borg. And he just exhibited. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Well, you know, Connors is, is always hitting the ball you know, most of the time real hard and He's going to make some errors because he, he's, he's taking chances, but he's going to get a lot of benefit. You know, he makes a good shot. Just wide. And another that break point for Connors. Connors. I would think that that ball that Connors just watched fly by would have been a tough one to let go. It was very close. It was, but I don't think he could reach it and, and make much of a play on it. So uh, at, that, at that point, you decide to let it go and hope it goes out. point Connors yeah. has ended up making an error We're back to deuce it's kind of a game lets both players settle in a little bit because they're hitting a lot of tennis balls and a lot of running good serve from Borg Connors won the first game 150000 dollars champion good pressure put on that time by Connors one two-hander into the backhand corner had a lot of pace and depth that's what set up the next shot again it's deuce that's out
Good passing shot by Borg. Take another oh, look and you game. see Connors on the attack. Off that short ball. In he comes. Borg rolls it right up the line. Connors really couldn't reach it. And it landed about a side. Come back live at love 15. <laughs> Surprised to see Connors hit that one in the air because it is some breeze down there. And it was a high one, but he hit it right on the nose for a winner. Breeze it hits back. If you don't get over the ball from Connors end, the near end, uh, it's tough to keep it in. You've got to get a little topspin on the ball or be very careful with anything else you do. would have been in the court had it not hit the top of the net. That's the kind of shot talking about that is a double break point now for Borg. Connors hits under that one-handed side with a little bit of breeze at his back, and it's tough to keep that ball down and get it into the court. of memorable matches, pitting the best players of a golden era against each other. Great names, legendary figures like Connors, Borg, McEnroe, Ash, Gerolitis, and more. The competition was fierce, the rivalries unequal. The Pepsi Grand Slam of Tennis, 1978 semifinal, Jimmy Connors versus Vitas Gerolitis. Tomorrow night at 8.30 on Tennis Channel, home of the slams. Davis Cup has been something I always dreamed that maybe one day I'd have a chance to do. It's something that uh, you feel when you go out there on the court and you're representing the country and you're representing all the fans of tennis and people that, you know, support the Davis Cup and sort of understand what it's about. It's, it's really an honor to walk out and sort of be the leader of that, that program. Yeah, my favorite moment for sure was uh, my first win because uh, it was just about a month after 9-11, so there's a, um, kind of a buzz in the crowd. Just being very respectful, but also proud to be American and proud of the country. It was such an incredible feeling that I'll never forget. It was always something that I wanted to do, and it also at the time I started playing, there was no Olympic tennis. So it was the only way to represent your country and to try to do something as a team, which I like to do. People in the stands that are great tennis players, you're looking at one right there. Maybe the all-time great Mr. Jack Kramer, a great friend. And Tony, he's been so very instrumental in the development of this game. There are some other good news that we'll give you. We have an opportunity now about a very significant development that took place today. We'll make Jack Kramer happy and you happy. And all tennis fans. In essence, the announcement that was made today is that the Men's International Professional Tennis Council and the top five players in the world, four of whom are here, have reached an agreement that will ensure the players' participation in the 1979 Grand Prix Tournament. Great news. That's Connors, Borg, Vilas, McEnroe, and Gerolitis, who are threatening to boycott the tour.
these are taped lines on this tennis court and the previous shot before Connors error his ball hit on the service line it takes a very different bounce the board did a good job just to get it back certainly looking for that forehand to come up the line. He judged correctly. Made it look routine. Typical Borg Connors point. Connors on the attack. Borg, the counter puncher, able to make the passing shot. 30 all. Borg leads 2 1 in the first set. 40 30. The best two out of three. see so often in this match, Pat, when Borg's top spin shot lands short around that service line, Connor's going to take it, try to really ram it one way or the other and come in behind it. See with this Connors two-hander really got Borg in trouble. And then the little drop shot. Borg was too deep in the court to get to it. As we come back to live action, it is break point for Connors. Take another look, and you'll see that Connors guesses right. Yes. Not a good drop volley here. Borg tried to hold his shot and fool him. It left him by rolling it cross court. Connors got there. Now watch this. Connors is looking for the ball to come back up the line. He never even go back to the center. Borg way out of position, and Jimmy couldn't get it over the net. So we come back, and it's Deuce. Borg serving. And now it's advantage Borg. Advantage Borg. That was a big miss, Pat. Mm -hmm. Down a service break, and it was a point to get even. Jimmy maybe tried to play a little too fine. A 
again he got the short ball and again he came in as you pointed out before right he didn't really Connors didn't hit his ball as deep as he'd like to but they got away with it of course Borg didn't get his attempt at the passing shot near enough to the sideline it's constant pressure by Connors and a counter puncher and Borg trying to make the passing shot and they both do it extremely well That's why they're ranked number one and two. Uh, I'm just thinking forward. that, Pat. You're right. Retreated to see the two best. Struggled and held his serve. Yes. You can see the mark beyond the baseline, about two inches mm -hmm. over the baseline. Four, three, three games to one. Sunglasses on of Davis Cup game, captain and leader of Australia for so many years, and directly behind him is Leonard Berglund, who played Davis Cup for Sweden for so many years, and is the coach of Bjorn Borg. Both fine gentlemen, very astute in the game of tennis. Serve hit right line. Really, when they hit on the line, they, the whole picture changes. <laughs> yeah, you better have that racket ready in the hitting position because it comes through faster and lower. has held his serve and Borg now leads three games to two in the first set. Hi, welcome to Progressive.com. How can I help you? Well, I haven't shopped for car insurance in a while. And you're worried that you've been paying too much, right? Yeah. So how can I know I'm getting a good deal? We can compare your Progressive Direct rate with other top companies. Wow. Seriously? Yeah. Look at the deal we just got him. That's a new pair of shoes. Yeah, or a big tricked out name tag. Making sure you get a great deal. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. I've got a great fitness tip to develop more power in your play. One of the keys to putting power in your play is to make sure you have a strong core. Why does that matter to a tennis player? Because when you hit the ball, there's a transfer of energy from the lower half of your body up through the middle. To
part of the body. We have a simple exercise called the prone plank, which works on it. So what we got to do with Mike is we're going to have him lay flat down on his stomach. The first thing we want to do once he's down here is establish what we call joint stacking and tracking. So Mike makes sure that his elbows are directly underneath his shoulders and down at his feet, his toes are directly underneath his ankles. From there, keeping nice and long, he's going to press himself off of the ground, strong through the abs and also strong through his entire body. Again, joint stack and track, elbows under shoulders, toes underneath the ankles. If you work on this just a little bit, a couple times a week, soon you're going to take what is your weakest link and make it one of your greatest strengths. For more One Minute Clinics, go to TennisChannel.com slash OMC. Happy birthday, Tennis Channel. High five. NFL Commissioner Pete Rozelle, who's been playing a lot of tennis this weekend. In addition to being on the telephone with many affairs pertaining to professional football, pretty good event he ran down here. Yeah, not in Boca, but in Miami. Super Bowl is something else, wasn't it? You know, Pat, uh, earlier we were talking about the agreement that was reached with the five top players and the pro council. And I said the players threatened to boycott it. Uh, maybe that's not uh, the, the accurate statement. Those five players didn't think that the rules presented to them, the options were fair, and they have worked out an agreement so everyone's happy and it's the best interest of the game. So uh, I certainly don't want to paint a different picture than really happened. Connors in the near court. Borg missing wide with that shot. Borg leads three games to two in the first set. Grand slam of tennis. Four top players in the world began play on Friday. Connors against McEnroe. Yesterday, Borg against Vilas. At the survivors. Didn't go over. Connors beat McEnroe 6-3, 6-4. Borg beat Vilas 6-3, 6-3. That's how they got here. Fine serve by Bjorn Borg. Some smoke. Tony, that means that uh, that agreement you were just talking about a minute ago means that uh, the top five, the five that we mentioned, will be playing in the Grand Prix Masters. Right. Service ace. And Borg gets the first one. That is assuming they qualify. Right, that's true. off that topic, Pat, uh, the players will now participate in the 1979 Grand Prix tournaments, the Grand Prix Bonus Pool, and the Colgate Masters, along with all the other players, so that's settled. Connor's going to make the error, being able to make the good force. Borg makes you hit a lot of tennis balls. Seems to me like you, you were saying earlier that he wasn't quite with it yet. I think he is now. He certainly is. interesting to watch because you barely move Connors very far behind the baseline. Sometimes you can move Borg and other players fairly deep behind the baseline, but Connors is always just behind it or on the baseline or inside. He's always trying to take it early. Ball jumps up and he's trying to get it on the way up.
Lorne Kuehl with his hand up to his face, and he is, uh, works with Jimmy Connors and travels with him. for board. Jimmy's a little bit mad at himself. Well, you just can't afford to make those kind of errors against a guy like Borg. after this word from your local station. Tommy Bahama presents Tennis in Paradise, Maui. With lots of sun, sand, and surf, Maui is a great escape. At the award-winning Kapalua Tennis Garden, you'll play on one of 10 courts surrounded by lush tropical foliage and stunning views. After a morning of tennis, trade in your racket for a golf club. Hit the links right next door. Kapalua is also home to two gorgeous championship 18-hole golf courses. Get into the aloha spirit by slowing down a bit and socializing with friends both old and new. The shops at Wailea is a great spot to relax over delicious food and drink. Then, get close to nature by heading to the gorgeous Iao Valley. It's a breathtaking hike along cascading waterfalls and crystalline pools. It truly is paradise. Find out more about this tennis paradise at TennisChannel.com. leads the first set in this best two out of three final for the $150,000 first prize is match against Jimmy Connors. Who do you think the people are for? Uh, sort of, it's well, mixed, yeah, almost I seems think. even, doesn't it? Very much so. down like this sometimes he tries to pick up the tempo even walks faster trying to get the, the adrenaline flow and get pumped up as he says oh. Borg will do his best not to let him get pumped up times also when he starts to try to pump himself up he gets involved with people in the stand mm -hmm. he says that helps about Borg, he's not going to change his style of play. Mm -hmm. He's going to play the same way all the way through the match. First Another thing you know is you're not going to wear him out. Either one of them. Is right. That's right.
awfully tough on this kind of a court to treat, keep trying to hit winners, keep taking all the chances. Which, of course, so far is what Connors is doing. And the way he always does, for that matter. Nothing unusual, nothing new. Set point for Borg. Tony, you mentioned that you always know that Borg is not going to change his style. What about Connors now after losing the set six games to two? Well, he's, I think, Pat, he basically will always continue to try to attack, but I think uh, he might be wise to be a little more patient. We talked about patience early, but be willing to rally and hit more balls and get exactly what you want. Take another look, and you'll see good court coverage by Borg and the constant pressure by Connors. This one almost went over Connors' head. He did a good job just to make a good shot. Now Borg's out of the picture. Connors gently blocks into the open court. Come back live to Team Love. First game of the second set. Borg won the first one. 6-2. Saw Vilas yesterday do something similar to that. Connors has made a lot of errors trying to come in on that short ball or hitting the ball into the net. Vilas did it quite a few times. Well, when you come in against Borg, you, you know he's going to make good passing shots, and uh, I guess the, you know, the tendency is to press a little bit. Of course, Connors always goes after the approach shot anyway if it's high. Here it comes. There he goes. shot by Borg. Double break point. First game of the second set. Borg broke Connors twice in the first set to win at 6-2. Oh. Wide.
August 22nd, 2004, Chilean Nicholas Masu nets Marty Fish in a five-set thriller to garner Olympic gold in Athens. But one wasn't enough for Masu, as he reeled in yet another gold medal, teaming with compatriot Fernando Gonzalez to win the doubles title, bringing home Chile its first ever Olympic gold medals. Murphy Jensen's busting out in Beijing. Oh, yes. Don't miss Murphy's Guide to Beijing. Premieres December 8th at 9.30 p.m. only on Tennis Channel. Like the famous Stevie Wonder song, tennis players can be very superstitious. Tennis players are, are superstitious like most athletes. The superstitions are more for people just to feel comfortable. I sometimes do it as well if I hit an ace or you know, a big serve and, and win the point with it. I, I take the same ball to serve with the, the next point. When the umpire says the time, do the same wiping off of the two arms and then twice on the head, twice on the racket, and then I'm ready to go. Placing your bags in your room a certain way and not moving them the whole week. Uh, I just found a penny out on the court today. Now, I have to find it, when I find a penny, it's on, on heads, I put it in my bag. I, I only do it if, if it's on tails. You know, kind of kind of keep it the same routine, but uh, I don't know about like rabbit's feet and stepping over lines or anything like that. I think we're pretty much superstitious. We just don't maybe show it so much or we don't talk about this, but we are. Hi, I'm Marty Fish, and you're watching Tennis Channel, home of the slams. Every champion has a certain aura, but no mystique was more distinctive than Bjorn Borgs. Everything from his ambling walk to his wardrobe, those tiny shorts, how did he play tennis in those tiny shorts, to his tranquil manner, made the Swede tennis's version of a subdued, yet really dazzling rock star. As his coach Leonard Berglund put it, Borg was a man with ice water in his veins. Borg won love in the second set, won the first one 6-2, and someone just yelled up to us that Borg is invincible. What do you think? I don't think anyone is invincible, but I must say he's played a super match so far. That volley he picked off to break serve was, was as much just sheer instinct and athletic ability. He had to guess and he guessed right and was had that racket just in the right place. Showing new balls to Connors. a shot like that, Pat, where Borg doesn't get close to it because Connors normally would pull that ball cross court and sort of have Borg leaning that way. So when you go the other way with any deception on the shot, it worked very well for you. So Connor is doing his best to get that service break back right away. see Borg's in real trouble right after this shot and a Borg hustles cross court and not only gets to it but makes an offensive lob that Connors has just stretched out to reach tried to stiff arm it and hits it wide 1530 that's a big point uh, all. scored last year when Borg beat Connors with 7-6-3-6-6-1 that was a classic. Oh, oh, oh. Borg was about eight feet behind the baseline and snapped that 
forehand topspin shot right back down the line for a winner. It's now 40 30. It was love 30 game. Take another look, and if you want to see some court coverage, watch this. Unlucky for Connors, the ball hits the net, and a look at the distance board, gets to it just a left minute, and flicks it up the line past Connors. He's trying to track it down. He can't catch up to it. He has to watch it bounce the second time. Incredible. Borg now leads two games to love in the second set. He has won the first 6-2. Set with himself. He knows he can't make those unforced errors if he's going to be successful against Borg on this kind of a surface. Their head to head record again is 10 6 Connors, including the last two times. But I've never seen him look this. Frustrated as he does now. Actually, Borg has beaten Connors in the finals here the last two years, but Connors has wins over Borg the last two times they played in 78. In the finals of the U.S. Open and the finals in the competition in Buenos Aires. Sneak one down the line. Take another look. Short, but a lot of pace on it. Look at the shot Borg makes, and then Connors reach out almost back to the net and make the cross court volley for a win. Good serve. And Connors has held serve, so Borg now leads two games to one in the second set. sign of a good decision in the world of personal finance it's mass mutual ask your advisor or visit massmutual.com tennis channel presents bag check look at all the gear the players are carrying around today on bag check ivan lubicic hello i'm ivan lubicic and this is my bag check well first of all i have a hat and a knee band it's pretty simple just Put it around your knee. With this, I can play without pain. All type of sunscreens. I have a book. One of my favorite writers, Croatian, Ante Tomic. Really funny guy. Oprosti nema oprosti, kaže tata tvrdo. As I said, funny guy. But I have a string saver. You take one line of this plastic thing, you put it in here, lift it, and then put one of these things between the string, and you can play half an hour, one hour, maybe sometimes even two hours longer than what you would usually do. I don't like to put this logo on top. This is the way I do, or like this. Of course, I wouldn't go like this. I'm Ivan Ljubicic, this was my back check, and see you next time. 
This has been Bag Check. Get bag checks on all your favorite players, only on Tennis Channel. While we have a second, while the players are coming out, a chance for us to remind you about the NBA on CBS Regional Games. Washington against Seattle, Chicago at Kansas City. Next Sunday at 3.45 p.m. Eastern Time. Consult your local listings for the game and time in your area. And another reminder, following this match, most of our West Coast viewers will see the challenge of the sexes and then the NBA on CBS. And that will be those same Kansas City Kings against Los Angeles. Kansas City playing awfully well. So are the Lakers, for that matter. I think they're tied for first in the division, I think. So is Borg playing very well, as a matter of fact. Court with that forehand, and at the last minute, he went back up the line with it. Boy, he hides it well, doesn't he? Yeah, good deception. So important. I think a lot of us who play just on the weekends don't even realize what all that's all about. <laughs> I never kicked the field goal. Big serve by Borg. So two points in a row, he gets errors off the return of serve and now leads 40 love. Trying to stretch his lead to 3-1 in the second set. Just wide, just barely missed an ace. Just missed. Even more difficult to realize, uh, I think, as a viewer, how well Borg is serving now, because the strength of that man, Connors, is really service return. Right. Two or three years ago, Borg just started the point with his serve, and he's improved it just tremendously. Hard to realize also that he's just 22 years old. That's out. shot to the very last minute we'll take another look and watch when Borg gets up to the drop volley he'll have his racket just partially back he doesn't take a ball watch him when he gets up to it now the racket's ready just holds it there the last time he'd gone cross court and that time he just rolled it up the line if you hold the ball like that your opponent has to make a move if he does it you have the open you complete the shot Connor is now serving at one three second set Another illustration, Trey, of what we were talking about a minute ago about disguising the shot. Right. For those of us who don't understand. <laughs> Just like a surgeon, up to this point, he's mixed up his passing shots well, made some fantastic gets. Just had a response for almost everything that Connors has thus far. had the good depth on the approach shot. Made it tough for Borg to get the ball down.
about as you watch Borg rally, he doesn't really hit the ball too close to the sidelines, and he's just keeping the ball in play. He only tries to do that when come to the net or when he's going to attack off of a short ball. It works. Good serve from Connors. Miss hit by Borg. I think it might have gotten the tape. encouragement to each player a little disruptive to them oh yeah boy you look around this place people are standing in the corners up on top Full house, and then some. Aisles uh, in some place are occupied. Borg walks away as somebody yelled out of the stand. Puts a little rosin on the handle of the racket. What you'll notice if you look at it is, is uh, wrapped a little higher than normal because of his two-handed style. Point for Borg. That's a good example of Borg not trying to make the, the winning passing shot off the first shot, but set it up with Connors out of position so the second one was simpler. keeps coming and if it's well done by Borg or if it's a mistake by Borg he never changes the way he looks no but you watch those eyes he knows everything that's going on out there all good players do that looks like you can see right through the end of the stadium complete concentration <laughs> Hit it down on the throat. And again, it's break point for Borg. Borg doesn't look like he's working as hard as Connors either. I like Jimmy's style. Uh, makes you feel like, uh, you know, he's, he's working harder, but uh, Borg's been running plenty. And uh, you watch that violent swing at the ball, particularly on the forehand side. He, he puts plenty of effort into his shots, too. Participation by Connors. Yes. I 
one thing a, a quality that all the top players have is they'll fight you to the bitter end. They're competitors. And they don't get that scared when under pressure. They learn to handle it. When they ever accuse either one of these two of not giving it everything they had. That's right. But that's how you get there. That's out. And again, it is break point for Barg. Once Borg makes you half volley, Pat, you know, you can't hit it very hard, and if you don't get it real deep, he's just, just deadly on the passing shot. So Borg has broken for the second time in the second set and leads 4-1. It's a high-speed game, and we've got you connected. At TennisChannel.com, our members-only newsletter is just a click away. Sign up, and we'll deliver the players, the passion, and the personality of your favorite game right to your email. From the pros in action to your personal satisfaction. Plus, the latest on Tennis Channel shows, specials, sweepstakes, and events. It's just not tennis without the net. TennisChannel.com. It's a star-studded night of tennis. The 2008 WTT All-Star Smash Hits. Premieres Saturday at 5.30 p.m. only on Tennis Channel. I've got an amazing fitness tip to develop explosive serves. Wouldn't you love to step up to that baseline and hit a rocket like erotic? Well, all the great servers of the game do one thing and that's develop great leg drive, sending that energy up into their arms. The simple exercise we're gonna do is called the medicine ball launch. You grab about a three or four pound medicine ball, you put it in the center of your chest. You're gonna deeply descend into your knees and then you're gonna extend up into the air with the ball and let it go nice and high. Mike steps up, grabs the medicine ball in the center of his chest, emphasizing the deep knee bend. He's gonna drive down and then exhale, shoot it up to the sky. He's gonna grab a ball, step up and do a serve. And when he's serving, he's now thinking about that deep knee drive. Yes, beautiful. If you work on this kind of stuff in no time, you're gonna be sending missiles across the court. For more One Minute Clinics, go to TennisChannel.com slash OMC. Hi, I'm Robbie Ginepri, and you're watching Tennis Channel, home of the slams. Next Saturday, CBS Sports presents the NASCAR Sprint Championship which is a 50-mile race for those who won pole positions in any of the 30 NASCAR Grand National events in 1978. Among those who were entered, Cale Yarbrough, Bobby Allison, David Pearson, Benny Parsons, Darrell Waldrop, Buddy Baker. Five players in the race, six players. Classic field next Saturday at 4 Eastern time for the NASCAR Sprint Championships at Summerall with Tony Trabert at Boca West Racket Club. <laughs> Watching the Pepsi Grand Slam finals, and right now, it's been uh, all board. Best I've ever seen him play. Well, at least today, Pat, every time Connors has gotten board even Position. He has really had to make a tough volley if he hadn't, if he wasn't passed. So Borg has just been phenomenal. He's run everything down. another look I think Borg hesitated after he makes this shot let's see now he sort of hesitates he stopped a second before he realized it maybe did have a chance and got there just as it bounced the second time to the live action and it's 
double break point for Connors. That's a kind of a point where Jimmy didn't show good patience mm -hmm. at all. That ball was up and away from him, and it's too tough to try to hit a, a winner or such a, an aggressive shot from that position. Still break point. Two in the second set. That is the first time Connors has broken board serve. A lot of the people pulling harder for Connors. They want to see more tennis. Shadows all the way across the court now, so that's not as much of a factor as it was earlier. Right, and the lights have been on, so. Conditions are good. Well, 15. Jimmy motioned up at the lights like uh, they might not be so good. Of course, dusk is always difficult. It's not really dusk yet, but getting the shadows late afternoon and, and dusk, uh, whether you're driving a car or whatever, it is more difficult to see. always love to see that kind of a smash where it goes up in the stands from a player's standpoint that's the easiest ball to hit close to the net and it's the safe way to keep a guy like a rabbit like board from cracking mm. it down is he the quickest today around the court you think Borg I mean well Garolite is as quick there are a lot of them, but he's certainly uh, very very quick yeah indeed <laughs> an awful close ball to, to let go. Oh, oh, yeah. Connors looked down at Borg and, and indicated, yes, it was out. And he also looked some people behind him saying, ooh, that was close. <laughs> Borg shot had hit, so it had extra topspin on it, if that's possible, coming from a guy like Borg. They have extra topspin. <laughs> so tightly it's like hitting it with a board almost as he brushes the ball a lot coming up the back but I've never heard of a player wanting a racket strung at 80 pounds like he does they have to put an extra layer of laminates on it yeah most of the strings would collapse it it's 30 all and now it's break point for board 40, 40. In this case, errors by Connors are getting him back in trouble. Game he needs badly. Break point, board. Good serve by Connors. Swung board wide, well out of position. Connor straightening the strings out in his racket. It's sort of a nervous habit as much as anything. He's, he seems to do it all the time. Connor. Now 
Connors has the advantage. He's one point away from closing the gap to 3-4 in the second set. Borg has won the first set 6-2. This long. sitting up and say, hit me. Connors caught the tape. Back to Deuce. Borg, 6-2 in the first set. Up 4-2 in the second. conference after he defeated McEnroe, O'Connor said, I, I only play the game one way. I've got to play my own game. And really, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to cut down on his own errors, but it's just not into to stay back there and rally too long. <laughs> Borg's going to come up and show the mark. Okay, the Check lines it says he doesn't see it. Did you call it? Four. Mike Blanchard handling things so well as he always does, it seems. Well, you know, the ball left the mark, Pat, and, and Borg walked up and circled the mark. Two it serves, was please. Mike says two serves. Two serves well, that would be because of the delay. Normally, uh, if there was no delay, it would not be two serves. It was called a fault. Borg doesn't like it too much. He's not going to say much. Go play. He looked up at Leonard Bergman. <laughs> so Connors has held his serve, yeah. and Borg now leads 4-3 second set. In the early 80s, and I think it was a Miami newspaper, and they were saying the most heinous figures of the 20th century. And, and you were? I think it was like Charles Manson was one, um, Jack the Ripper was two, I was three, and Attila the Hun was four. That ball was out! The set was over! I was comfortable being who I was, and that was the best thing for me to be the best player in the world and I wasn't going to compromise that, my integrity. And I um, wasn't going to have it, an image or I wasn't going to get a publicist. I just, I wanted to be a tennis player. Mum sort of called me a Jekyll and Hyde sometimes, you know, <laughs> on the tennis court. I've got that very competitive edge, I guess, and that comes from being brought up in you know, a sporting background. When I'm off the court, I'm more private side, I guess, than a lot of other people. Agassi trained in Las Vegas for most of his professional career. In Andre's case, it was training for a couple of decades of tournaments and, uh, and home served as well. This is a place of character, dreaming, taking chances, taking risks, and every now and then doing what hadn't been done before. <coughs> Our training center here is pretty special. It happens to be the home of the eight Grand Slam trophies and the Olympic gold medal. And these trophies are in here. Andre and I are often asked why, and um, we both believe that this is where he earned it. We're dreamers. We're just dreamers, man. We just, do you think you can do it? Let's see. Let's see if we can do this. Let's play well into your 30s. Do you think you can do it? Let's see. 
And that's Las Vegas. For more information on cross training in Las Vegas, go to tenniscanal.com slash Vegas. The Grand Slam of Tennis at the Boca West Racquet Club. We're in the second set of the final between Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg. And Borg will serve leading 4-3 in that second set. Just got through changing shirts. Does it make him feel a little fresher, Tony? Well, it's getting a little cool now. It's uh, later in the day, so a wet shirt, uh, it's harder to stay warm. Passing shot. Borg stretched out wide on the forehand. Just roll it right down that line inside about six inches or so. 30 love. Couldn't tell whether Connors was trying to actually make a drop shot or just pull it off short down on the forehand side of Borg, but he caught the net, so it's 40-15. Oh, you won't see that happen very often. Well Borg hit one that far out. Not unless he's miss hit it. And that was not a miss hit. 40-30. Borg leads 4-3, second set. He won the first one, 6-2. Good quick feet by Connors. Take another look. When he stretches out to make this volley, watch how quickly he retreats because he expects the lob. Now watch, he backs up immediately, good little short steps, cut off the ground well and knocked off the overhead. And back to the accident is Deuce. <laughs> Connors has hit that tape three or four or five times now where that ball's jumped up in the air. And in every case, has fallen back on his side. Advantage goes to board. That's why. Yes. Every game, every point is important, Tony, but this is one that Connor's just about got to have. I agree with you. And he's he's in that close, and he's, the game is close now, and so he needs it and wants it badly. <laughs> Oh, 
twice now. Borg has guessed on two handers. One went cross court. This one down the line, and he's picked them both off. We'll take another look. The offensive lob, and Borg just barely got the tip of his racket on. Now watch, he waits and then guesses up the line and just blocked it into the open court. Unbelievable. We come back live, and it is advantage to Borg. I'll say again, I've never seen Borg better than today. Oh, he's done everything right. Good example of theory. Connors attacked straight up the middle, cut down the angles. Borg in return went right back to him, figuring that Connors wouldn't be able to penetrate him with a volley, but then he hurt him with a good deep volley, so it's back to Deuce. Again, Borg has the advantage. Barely hit the top of the net. Oh, what a treat to see. Two great like this. Hammer and tar in a battle like this. serving at 3-5. Borg has won this championship two years in a row. He is with his back moment. $150,000 goes to the victor. talked about it before but when Connors makes a two-handed drop shot he takes the racket up above the flight of the ball just as he does when he's going to drive the two-hander and that's where the disguise comes in and as a result you can't tell until he's actually executed the shot whether it's a drop shot or not he did it from well inside the court too which helps just missed one for Connors. I'm not sure he agrees with the call. I know there are some people in the audience that doesn't agree, but that often happens. Was clearly long. Mm -hmm. No 
Pat, what happens to you as a player when you get lose confidence in a lines person, uh, anything close after that, you, you think you're getting robbed. And it sometimes is more difficult to concentrate. It's 30 all. Or just two points away. Connors gave Borg a real free swing at that passing yeah. shot. His approach shot was not deep at all, and it was not hit with that much authority. One of the few times Borg sort of yanked at that passing shot instead of keeping it smooth. Connors is still alive. One match point saved. Said, let's go, Guillermo. Time Connors tried the drop shot from around the baseline, got it too deep. Borg got in to hit the winner with no difficulty, and it's Deuce. hit several forehand passing shots up the line and that time he rolled it cross court. Second time it has been match point.
Borg was superb uh, several times during the match, but I had never seen him any better. Do you agree? I, well, Pat, I, I have to say so. Uh, I have obviously not seen him play all his matches. Uh, he had to be awfully good when he uh, won Wimbledon. Okay, we'll be back at Boca West for more of the Pepsi Grand Slam of tennis after this word from your local station. November 15, 1994, Martina Navratilova completes her Hall of Fame singles career at the Virginia Slims Tour Championship. In the ceremony after, she is awarded with a Harley Davidson, and a banner is raised in Madison Square Garden commemorating her stellar career in which she captured 18 Grand Slam singles titles. Now that's what you call a major achievement. Stars of Court and Screen teamed up for a day of play to make a difference lives of some special kids at the Bank of the West Pro Celebrity Tennis Classic, hosted by Luke and Murphy Jensen. Everybody wins. There are no losers, and it's great. The day started with a star-studded pro-am. The pro-am, I was happy. I had a really, a really good serve. The celebrity exhibition was also entertaining. I'm trying to be funny. I just see what happens. <laughs> but the kids' clinic was the biggest highlight. You know, you just want to come out, make it a fun experience, and it's for a great cause at the same time. Proceeds from the day-long event and evening gala helped several charities and wouldn't have been possible without Bank of the West. It's heartwarming, and it's also inspiring. It's wonderful to make the contributions for the kids. It's very close to my heart because you feel it really could happen to anyone. Just a single chromosome that separates you or me from someone with Down syndrome. Well, as a tennis player, we're so fortunate to do something we love to do. It's just a great way to give back. Today was amazing. You got to see where the money was going. Hi, I'm Andy Murray and you're watching Tennis Channel, home of the slams. And so another grand slam of tennis. That's the fourth one has been completed and for the third time out of those four years the champion is Bjorn Borg, and each time he has beaten Jimmy Connors in 1977, he beat Connors 6 4, 5 7, 6 3. Last year, 7 6, 3 6, 6 1. And this year, 6 2, 6 3. 1976, Ely Nastasi won this championship. Right now, let's go down to Andy Pearson, who is the this is President the third time you've come PepsiCo to Slam Incorporated. The third time you've emerged as the winner. I think all of us who saw the match today would agree that you're a true champion in every sense of the word, Bjorn. I don't know if it gets you up for this particular match, whether it's the fact that the winner receives about $75,000 an hour or the fact that he establishes himself as the number one player in the world. But it's my great pleasure to award you this top prize of $150,000 for winning today's Pepsi Grand Slam. Congratulations, Bjorn. And I know that I know that all of us would like to hear some of your thoughts on winning the Pepsi Grand Slam. Well, as, as you said, this, this was the third time I'm down here, and uh, actually I have to say that I'm feeling very well down here because I've been, I've been winning now three times, and uh, I think every year I've been playing very well, and today's match against Jimmy, I was playing very well, and uh, this was the first time we played this year. It's going to be many more matches between us, 79, so maybe next time he's going to beat me, so we just have to see. And uh, then I will thank uh, Pepsi too, putting them all, all this money and <laughs> giving me free Pepsi during the week. That's very nice. <laughs> uh, I wonder if that had anything to do with your winning. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, 
Well, thanks very much, Bjorn. It's a, you're a great champion and a marvelous gentleman. Thank we you thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Jim? And now... I guess those cheers, Jim, tell you better than anything I could say what this crowd thinks of the tremendous battle you put up. There's no more courageous or gifted player in the world than Jimmy Connors. <laughs> Nothing I'm going to say to somebody as competitive as you are is going to make today any more happy, but I would like to present you $75,000, and I assume since you're in tennis, at least in part because it's your profession, a $75,000 payday isn't half bad, Jim. Congratulations to you, pal. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I don't think any event would be anything unless you people would come out, so I'd like to thank you people here for, for the... Uh, for the support that you give to the tournament and to the players. Uh, you people here are what makes a tournament a tournament, and I appreciate that, and I'm sure everybody else does. Hey, I love you too, baby. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank Pepsi for being a sponsor of, uh, of the tournament. Uh, the tournament is, as always, you get uh, the four best players, I think, at the time in the world, and I have myself and uh, Bjorn and Guillermo and, and John McEnroe, so I think you got the, the best tennis that you could get for this weekend anyway, so I hope I... <laughs> 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 so I'd like to thank you all very much again, and I hope I come back again next year. Thank you. Okay. My colleague, Tony Trabert, has gone down to the court, and uh, hopefully when we come back in just a minute, he'll have uh, an opportunity to chat with the champion from 1979's Grand Slam of Tennis, Bjorn Borg. So if everything works, Trabe will be back with him in a minute. Mr. December. <laughs> Some of the sexiest guys on the ATP Tour are taking it off in the debut edition of the official player calendar. It's a big honor for me to be in this calendar. It was my dream to become a professional tennis player. So here I am today doing stuff like modeling. The 2009 calendar features striking pictures of players from 12 countries taken by French photographer Corinne de I wanted to find a photographer who could capture the sensual essence, but make it classic and sophisticated. Definitely the first time I've taken and pictures of their shirts off. That's a little embarrassing, but it's still fun. The idea for the calendar was born at a tournament where fans crazy for Dmitry Tursunov. A lot of the women fans were screaming after him, wanting a date, wanting to get married. Who doesn't like to feel maybe a little bit admired for the fact that they work hard and they look good? After this taste of modeling, will any of the guys be making a career change? No. Tennis is enough. I don't want anything else. For calendar info, go to TennisChannel.com. A tennis match is much more than just a contest of racket skill. It's also a contest of will. When a match ultimately is decided, it will usually be because one of the two players has felt dominated and gives in mentally. One of your objectives in a tennis match is to bring your opponent to this point. If you're strong and impervious to anything your opponent might do, he tends to feel weak. You walk and carry yourself in the same manner no matter what happened on the last point. You want to give the impression that basically nothing your does can hurt you. And number two, that you have the answers to anything that's happening on court. Because when you bring your opponent to this point where he's dominated by you, and things then start to go wrong for him, much more likely to give in and ultimately lose. For more One Minute Clinics, go to TennisChannel.com slash OMC. Tony Trabert, our Daly Davis Cup captain, has the winner, Bjorn Borg, and the runner-up, Jimmy Connors, down on the court right now. So 
Well, let's go down. You got it, Captain? Thank you very much, Pat. And ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to talk to two great champions. Jimmy Connors, our runner-up here for the third straight year, and Bjorn Borg, our champion, who is three-time Wimbledon champion, also three-time Grand Slam champion. Bjorn, congratulations. Thank you, Tom. Have you ever played a better tennis match than you did today? No, I think probably it was uh, one of my best matches. I felt, felt very good out there, and I think I was moving very well. I always came came right to the ball, and uh, I think I always was one step ahead of maybe Jimmy. That maybe that's why I was playing so well today. Jimmy, how about your analysis of the match in general? Well, I, I just kept playing my normal game, and uh, Bjorn hits the ball very short, and that was a lot of top spin. So I just kept coming in and hitting the approach shot. I think maybe. Uh, yeah, I could have maybe done a little bit more with my approach shots at times, but uh, I wasn't going to stay back and, and and play a different kind of game to stay back and you know, just poop the ball back. That's not my style. It's never been my style. So uh, I enjoy playing the way that I was taught, and uh, that's the way I played today. Well, uh, the way you were taught has been awfully good. Your record's been <laughs> had been super, but um, I was saying to Bjorn, uh, he played well. He made very few errors, and he also stole a few. What about those two handers he picked off at the net? Stole a few. He got, uh, you know, I maybe should have held the ball a little bit longer and let him move a little bit before I hit uh, when you're going you're going you know and uh, uh, he got to a lot of balls that uh, you know, I ripped a few and he just stuck his racket out and poked them back and hit him pretty firm actually at times so uh, yeah, he played very well today in retrospect what would you do differently if you could do it all over again today well <laughs> my game was my game Tony you know and uh, um, I would probably just uh, do a little bit more with my approach shots and and uh, maybe try to see the ball a little bit better on the short ones and, and move in a little bit quicker, I think, on the short ones. But outside of that, I thought it hit the ball quite firm. Bjorn, uh, how about your feelings about, about the match? I know your game plan is basically the same. Keep it going, let them come in and try to make the passing right. shot. Yeah, that's your uh, strategy on play, to keep the ball in play and uh, try to keep the good depth on the ball. And you know, my game is to, to play from the baseline and hit a lot of rallies. So that's I've grown up in these kind of circles in Europe, and th that's the way I'm playing. And uh, I think what Jimmy said, he, he might be missing a lot of approach shots today, but I think I was uh, passing very well from four and back. I make a lot of good passing shots. I would say that's a fair assumption. Uh, Jimmy, when you're coming in against a fellow like Borg, uh, do you think perhaps you or anyone else might press a little bit on the, on the approach shot, knowing that he does pass so well? I think a lot of players do. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'm pressing too much. I think that you know I should just. Uh, uh, it's not whether you're trying to make them too good at times. You know you're staying back and you're working for the short ball. And uh, my whole game has been since I've been playing was to wait for the short one and go ahead and go for it. You know and uh, and come in and try to make the volley. But it, like Bjorn said, he he uh, hit a lot of good passing shots uh, off both sides today. So uh, you know so this time was one time. Tomorrow's another time. You know we've played a lot of great matches between the two of us, and we're going to play a lot more great matches as. Uh, as our careers go on, so this was a good one today for him. Maybe tomorrow's a good one for me. So working at it. Well, we know that Bjorn said that in in his uh, speech that you will be playing many times against one another, and as he said, maybe next time you'll come out the victor. Let me just go back a little bit. Uh, I was not uh, fortunate enough to see your match at Wimbledon, but your tactics are they the same on grass as they would be here? Well, it's com completely different game, completely different surface grass. It's uh, much faster than this one. You know, here you can stay and maybe have, have a rally for 15, 20 times. And grass is it's very difficult because the bounce is very low and sometimes the grass is very bad. To win. It's a two completely different games. There's no way you can compare them. So you attack more, you come in more behind your serve? Yeah, on grass I will have to play a little bit more aggressive than I do on play for sure. And of course, Jimmy, for you, you're going to be coming in uh, all the time on a grass court. Well, I didn't at Wimbledon. <laughs> maybe if I, uh, I thought I... At Wimbledon, I should have attacked a lot more. I'd stay back, and we'd hit some balls, and Bjorn would hit the top spin short again, and and uh, I wouldn't take advantage of it. Maybe two or three times a point, I had a chance to come in. But uh, during the summer, I worked on it, and then by the time the Flushing Meadows came around, when he hit the short one, I would take it and come in, and, and that's basically my game anyway, is to uh, is to attack, and uh, once the ball is short, then you know, I'm going to come in. Okay, Jimmy, thanks very much to you, and Bjorn, thank you for your kindness, and now let's go back to Pat Summerall. And thank you very much, Tony. Thank you very much, Jimmy. And thank you very much, the champion, Bjorn Borg. Those are the scores as Borg wins the Grand Slam of Tennis. 
Borg's easy victory marked the beginning of a sea of change in his rivalry with Connors. That year, Borg would win all six of their matches, losing just two sets to a man who had previously held the upper hand. Meanwhile, Connors' 1979 was marked by significant personal change, including the adjustment to marriage and the birth of his son, Brett. So consistent had Jimmy been over the last five years that it was considered a slump for him to finish the year ranked only number two in the world on the ATP computer. This edition of Tennis Channel Classics and our presentation of the Pepsi Grand Slam, I'm Kevin Frazier, and of course, we'll see you next time.